Hi there, I'm Sasha Handel, and I'm back for Trainer of the Month Club with Well and Good. Today we're gonna to be taking you through a coordination workout geared toward beginner runners. And you won't need any equipment, but for fun, we're gonna use a shoe. So today's workout will take us through eight different movements, some that we'll perform on one side and then repeat on the other side. But we'll begin with just a little bit of lengthening and extension through the muscles to get them all warmed up and prepped. Let's get started. So movement number one is just a forward fold with a raise and it'll get us a lot of extension through the back of the leg as we reach down to the floor and it'll get us a lot of extension in the lower back and the shoulders as we reach for the sky. Even if you don't have a shoe, you can do this just as well with only your body weight. All you need to ensure is that you have a soft bend in your knees, your feet are about hips distance apart, and you're allowing the weight of the body to flow naturally through an extension at the top and a beautiful extension at the bottom. Make sure you allow your chin to fully tuck towards your chest and your breathing to occur naturally. We'll do it one more time and then we can move on. So the next move is gonna generate just a little bit more heat for the legs. We'll alternate a backstepping lunge and while you're at the bottom of this lunge, you're just gonna dribble your shoe through from one hand to the next. We'll alternate legs, and as you lunge, you are predominantly pressing through the front foot, but you also wanna make sure that you're evenly distributing the weight through both legs, the front and the back. As we drop down, you wanna grow from the crown of your head, make sure that your core is super braced, and then this pass through is just enough time to add a little bit of tension through that front leg and load up the muscles that you're gonna need once you start to run. We're looking for 90 degree bends in both of your legs and a low enough lunge that you can pass this through comfortably from one hand to the next. All right, so now we're gonna take it into a similar movement pattern, but instead of lunging, we're going to squat. So that will require you to take your feet out wider than hips distance. And this time, we're gonna actually come all the way down. You'll pass it from one leg to the other leg and then as you stand up, we'll drive it forward. Again, you don't have to have a shoe for this. You can do this with almost any piece of equipment you have at home, but the shoe just makes it more exciting and I think a little bit more motivating to get you out the door and onto the pavement for your run. So we're squatting, we're dribbling, almost like a basketball player, but not driving it away from the chest. And whenever you push something away from your body, that's when your midsection needs to be the most braced to make sure that you're protecting your lower back and engaging your entire core. All right, last one here. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to a bit of single leg stuff. So this is a single leg hinge, and I like to call it a hinge because the movement happens from the hips and it's kind of a combination movement. So we'll hinge and then we'll lunge. And since your body is already familiar with what a lunge is, the muscle memory will be there. And that muscle memory is super important when you're running in the same plane of motion that you would be lunging. We'll take the hinge and to add a bit more intensity, we'll dribble that shoe around and that's where the coordination comes in. If you can balance, great. We'll take it to the lunge and then you'll just twist over the front leg. We're gonna stay on the same leg to really start to build that heat. We'll balance, we'll lunge, and we'll twist. So for the sake of this video, I'm doing it a little bit slower, but you wanna try to find a rhythm at home and a cadence that allows you to flow through this seamlessly. First find your balance, then find your flow. All right, 
We're gonna do this one more time on the left leg, and then we can just take it to the right. One lunge, one twist, and then we'll meet back in the center. Okay, so I like to start by just shifting the weight to the working leg, and then when you're ready, we'll push the hips all the way back. We'll dribble that shoe right behind the thigh, balance, and then twist. When I'm finding this balance, I like to flex the opposite foot as it reminds me to engage my lower abs. Hinge it here, pass it here, flex the foot here, and then we'll lunge and twist. Beautiful, so there's several working parts here. And when you're running, whether it's outside, whether it's on a trail, whether it's on a track, there is definitely gonna be something around to distract you. So if you're trying to coordinate your stride, your cadence, and your breath, these movements are perfect for that because it helps you focus on several different things at once. Okay, we'll do it one last time on this leg and then we're gonna move on. Perfect. All right, so this next movement is going to take us into a bear hover position, which is very similar to a plank position, but we're gonna bring the knees underneath the hips so as to really challenge the quads while you're holding this position. So if you're on a mat at home, take that shoe or whatever piece of equipment you might be using off to one side. And now what we're gonna do is pull it with the right hand to the right side and pull it with the left hand to the left side. Ideally, your hands would be directly underneath your shoulders, your knees would be directly underneath your hips, and your knees would be no more than two inches above the ground with constant tension through the palms of the hands. Pulling it from one side to the other. I like to do this with a weight at home, but really any piece of equipment is going to challenge your coordination and your stability here while you load not only the core, but the quads as well. All right, friends, we're here for just another 15 seconds. You smile, it helps the time go a little bit quicker. I lied, that's not true. <laughs> All right. One more time on each side. Your quad should be starting to feel the heat. I know mine are. All right, great. So the next thing we're gonna do is a side plank. We're gonna take it to the left side and we're gonna do a little bit of a combination here. So I've got some options for you. If you would like to take your plank from a modified position, you absolutely can. We'll bring the bottom knee down, we'll align it with the hip and the bottom elbow, and you wanna have a beautiful plank position here. So this is your modified version. What you can do from here, we'll thread your shoelace underneath your hips and then reach it all the way up to the sky. Once you reach this top portion, we'll crunch hand to toe or shoe to shoe. All right, if you wanted to take it to a little bit of a more advanced version, well then all you have to do is stack or stagger your legs, fully extend into a side plank, and then complete the movement from there. One twist, one crunch, and then repeat. Either way is effective, but you should set yourself up in the position that makes you feel the strongest and most successful. Okay, we're gonna do it two more times on this side. We'll shake it out, and then we'll do it on the other side. And done. All right. So again, stacking your elbow directly underneath your shoulder, lifting from the hips, and you can stack or stagger your feet. I personally like to have a staggered stance because I feel like the distribution of weight allows me to feel more supported. But again, you can do whatever makes you feel the strongest. So, we'll thread it, we'll reach it, and then we'll crunch it. Good. 
This is a really great full body movement, targeting the right side, but as we crunch the top leg to the top arm, that also pulls the work into the left side at the same time. Whew. Okay, that's it. You have eight moves. You could repeat it for a little bit of a longer, more intense workout. You could do this before your long run, your short run, or some speed work. This is really great for developing coordination in both novice runners and really, really seasoned runners. So grab your shoe, grab any piece of equipment, and get coordinated. For more running tips and tricks, subscribe to Well and & Good, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.